Today I wanted to talk about carving dead wood. Uh, somebody had asked me how to do it. I'm not an expert. There's different levels of it and there's some people out there that are just unbelievable with their carving. Uh, however, I'm going to tell you how I do it. Uh, it's usually a multi-stage process. I started out by usually having more than I ultimately need. I don't leave any cut ends. Like if I take a, a branch like this and I want to create deadwood with it, I'm not going to um, leave the cut ends. I'm going to pull them and I'm going to strip them and I'm going to make them appear natural. I like to see taper and movement in my deadwood. I like something interesting to dazzle the eyes. Uh, if it's boring, I eliminate it. Uh, deadwood's hard to grow back. Uh, it doesn't. So it's always better to leave it a little larger and then carve it down into the proper size and proportion. Typically, <clears throat> I have a flex cut knife that I keep pretty um, sharp that does a really good job of initially stripping the deadwood. And then I go back with a pair of gin pliers and I strip to to start create some, some hollows and some sections in it that are uh, more interesting again to the eye. But you can see that stripping this happens pretty quick when the when the uh, branch was alive. If it's been dead for a while it takes a lot longer to remove the bark. You can also use your gin pliers, you put them on there and you can pull off right at the cambium layer, it comes right off in pieces. So this is stripped um, and I'm ultimately going to make this into a literati style tree, obviously. Um, I'm going to also uh, gin this, but you can see how this one has some subtle movement and taper and interest, but this one's kind of long and straight before it gets uh, interesting. So I'm actually going to do this one shorter and then create some showery along how to connect everything. Okay. Okay, so it's stripped. You can see how it's stripped, but you see how there's a cut uh, top on there. What I do is I take my gin pliers and I can actually start getting into the wood fibers and pulling that down uh, and twisting and, and pulling it down so it looks like it was tore. Maybe it had died back, maybe the hurricane came and broke the top off years ago. Just making it appear more aged. And this is just the initial carving because then I can come in here with a with a nice uh, little hand tool or even like a little Dremel and I could start creating a little bit more interest and a little bit more detail. Uh, Deadwood is one of those that you can just um, continue and it'll age it's in its own right throughout the year and then you'll hit it with a wire wheel or even just a wire brush and you'll see that it'll it'll age um, by itself and just become better and, and more ancient looking over the time. These are the live ones, you can see how easy they were. And then these are the dead ones, you can see how much harder it is to strip. Uh, wire wheel does a good, good job of taking this off. So I'm going to strip these and clean these up with this for now. Um, so this is the initial um, deadwood treatment. Uh, I still have to wire brush it. It'll take a lot of these little these little fuzzies off. Make sure when you use a wire brush that you wear eye protection. And you be real careful because the wire, the uh, brass uh, pieces will fall off. Just clean this up for the initial time. Then in about a month, you can hit this with lime sulfur. Uh, at your leisure, you could even do it before. You can come in here and start creating a little bit more detail in here, more grooves, uh, more interest. But at this size, I mean, this is the first, the first uh, deadwood treatment. Uh, thank you for watching.